Hello. So in this video, we talk about functions of random variables. So suppose that I have a random variable x, and I have another random variable y, which is defined as g of x, where g is a function. So for example, y could be x squared, or y could be sine of x, and so on. So suppose that we know the probability mass function of x. Let's say x is a discrete random variable with possible values. This is the range of x, x1, x2, and so on. And suppose that we know probability uh, that x is equal to xk for any xk. Now the question is, what is probability mass function of y? We want to answer that question in this video. So the first thing that we note that it is easy to find the range of y, the possible values of y. Well, if possible values of x are x1, x2, x3, and so on, then possible values of y are, well, g of x1, g of x2, and so on. Right? If x equals x1, then y equals g of x1. If x equals x2, then y equals g of x2, and so on. Note that these values, g of x1, g of x2, and g of x3, and so on, are not necessarily distinct. Some of them might be the same thing. For example, if possible values of x are, let's say, all integers, like minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, then if x is minus 2 or plus 2, then in both cases, y becomes 4, if y is defined as x squared. So let's start by looking at an example. So let x be a discrete random variable with the following probability mass function. Px of k is equal to 1 over 5 for k equals minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So basically, x is either minus 1, 0, plus 1, 2, or 3. And all of them, the probability of all of them with probability 1 over 5. Okay? So Px of minus 1 is equal to Px of 0 equals Px of 1 equals Px of 2 equals Px of 3 equals 1 over 5. And we define a new random variable y, which is given by y equals 2 times the absolute value of x. And the question is, what is the range and probability mass function of y? Okay, so let's uh, try to answer that question. First of all, let's find possible values of y. What are the possible values of y? Well, if uh, now what are the possible values of x? The range of x is equal to minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So these are possible values of x. Now if x is equal to minus 1, then what is y? y is going to be 2 times absolute value of minus 1, which becomes 2. If x is equal to 0, then y becomes 2 times absolute value of 0, which is 0. If x is equal to 1, then y is going to be 2. And uh, if x is equal to 2, then y is going to be 4. And if x is equal to 3, y is going to be 6. And you just simplify this set because 2 is repeated. So it's just 0, 2, 4, 6. So there are uh, four possible values for y. So we need to find the probabilities of these values. Okay, so what is Py of 0? This is probability that y equals 0, which is equal to, well, what is y? Is 2 absolute value of x equals 0. Then, well, this can be 0 only if, if and only if, x is going to be 0, right? And what is the probability that x is equal to 0? Well, we know that this is going to be Px of 0, which is 1 over 5. So, what is Py of 2? This is equal to probability that y equals to 2, which is equal to probability that 2 absolute value of x is equal to 2. Now, here, there are two possible values of x that can result in 2 times absolute value of x equals 2. Basically, this can happen if x is either 1 or x is equal to minus 1. Well, we know the probability of each of them. This, both of them, for both of them, the probability is just one over five. So px of one plus px of minus one, which is one over five plus one over five becomes two over five. So we found P, py of two. So how about py of four? This is probability that y equals to four, but y is two times absolute value of x equals to four, and this is the same as 
probability that x is equal to 2 or x equals minus 2, right? But note that x cannot be minus 2 because the possible values of x were only minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So basically, this is the same as saying that this is the probability that x equals 2. And again, that's 1 over 5. Similarly, p y of 6 is equal to 1 over 5. So we actually found the probability mass function of y. So if I want to summarize all we have done here, I can write that the probability mass function of y, p y of, let's say, k is equal to, well, it's going to be 1 over 5 for, uh, what values for k equals, I believe, 0, 4, and 6, and it was 2 over 5 for k equals 2, right? So the probability that y equals 2 is going to be 2 over 5 for the probability that y equals 0 is going to be 1 over 5, the probability that y equals 4 is 1 over 5, and the probability that y equals 6 is 1 over 5. Okay, so let's summarize our methodology here. So the basic problem that we tried to answer was this. I had a random variable x. I knew what the probability mass function of x was. So PMF of x was given. Px of xk. Uh, let's say the range of x is x1, x2, and so on. And we, I was interested uh, in finding probability mass function of a random variable y defined as g of x, where g was a function. Well, we said that uh, we can find, first of all, the range of y. Range of y was given by g of x1, g of x2, and so on. And then we said that we can find the probability of each of these values in the range. For any y in the range, we needed to find p y of y probability that the random variable y is equal to y. Now, we can write this as probability that y equals y, but y is what? g of x. So, it's equal to the probability that g of x is equal to y. And then we continued from here. Because we know probability mass function of x, we should be able to calculate this probability. So, here is a general scenario. I have a random variable uh, x again. Then I have another random variable y, which is g of x. And I want to know expected value of y. So how can I find this? Well, one way to do this is first to find probability mass function of y. We just talked about it. So we find we find probability that y equals y for any lowercase y that is in the range of y. And let's say just write it yk to be more accurate. If range of y is y1, y2, and so on. If I find py of yk, then I can simply use the formula for expected value. This is sum of yk probability that y equals yk. Okay? But there is another way that is usually easier than this method. And we call it the law of the unconscious statistician um, or LODIS. Here is the rule that I'm talking about. So remember, what was the expected value of x? It was sum of right xk g of, sorry, it was sum of xk times probability that x is equal to xk, right? So, this is expected value of x. Now, this rule that we're talking about here says that expected value of any function of x can be written as the same sum. Though all we, need, all we do is just replace xk by g of xk. p of x equals xk. So basically, what it says that it, you don't need to find the probability mass function of, you know, this random variable y. Even if you only have probability mass function of x, you can directly find the expected value of y. So let's state it uh, as a rule here. So basically, it says that the expected value of g of x is equal to this sum. This is the same sum that I just mentioned. Okay, so let's look at an example to make sure that you understand how to use this. So, it's just a previous example. Let x be a discrete random variable with uh, px of k equals 1 over 5 for k equals these values. And we want to find expected value of 2 absolute value of x, right? That's what we want to do. This is my random variable y, which is equal to g of x. So, how do we solve this problem? Well, we can just use this uh, result that we discussed. We say that 
you know, we know that the expected value of x is equal to the sum of all values times their probabilities. So expected value of x is minus 1 times its probability, which is 1 over 5, plus 0 times its probability, 1 over 5, plus uh, 1 times its probability, 1 over 5, plus 2 times its probability, 1 over 5, plus 3 times its probability, 1 over 5, right? This is expected value of x. But I'm interested in expected value of, expected value of g of x, which is 2 times absolute value of x. So all I need to do is just write, well, instead of minus 1, I write 2 times absolute value of minus 1 times its probability, plus 2 times 0 times 1 over 5, plus 2 times 1 times 1 over 5, plus 2 times absolute value of 2 times 1 over 5, and plus 2 times absolute value of 3 times 1 over 5, okay? So all I'm doing is I'm using this rule. Expected value of g of x is going to be sum of g of x k's probability that x equals x k, okay? So if we do this, we can simplify this. This is 1 over 5, then 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 4 plus 6, and this is going to be uh, 14 over 5, okay? Um, note that we could uh, actually find this using the probability mass function of y that we found in the previous problem, probability mass function of y, which was given by this. So we could uh, directly write expected value of y is going to be, well, again, it's going to be 1 over 5 times these values, 0 plus 4 plus 6, plus 2 over 5 times 2, which is, again, 4 plus... Yeah, it becomes 14 over 5. The same value, the same result. However, if I wanted to use this method, I needed to find, do all of these calculations beforehand. I, need, I needed to find the probability mass function of y. Whereas in this method that I just used here, you know, using Lotus, I didn't need to do that. Uh, I just directly found the expected value of 2 times absolute value of x. So this method... It's usually uh, easier and faster. We can only use this if we are interested only in the expected value of y, expected value of g of x. Okay, thank you.